Say you've been following along with the meta programming series and have started using more and more complex meta functions in your own project. Using the lazy instantiation techniques we discussed in the previous episode, you have now managed to implement your first algorithms that can handle hundreds of inputs, and suddenly you're hit with this compiler error. Recursive template instantiation exceeded maximum depth of 1024. Is this the true limit of template meta programming? Will we never be able to efficiently process thousands of types because of the instantiation recursion limit? No need to worry, as today we'll discuss two different techniques for breaking this next barrier. And in the process, we will also make our implementation another 50 times faster. Let's get started. I will illustrate these new optimization techniques by improving upon the remove if algorithm that we designed in the previous episode. First, we will rewrite our remove if as a combination of a transform and a join. This by itself will only improve compilation time slightly, but it does make it easier for us to apply different kinds of optimizations. We will find that the compilation time of a transform join style remove if is dominated by the join, and as such we will focus our optimization efforts on the join algorithm. The transform meta function acts the same way as a standard transform. It applies a function to each element in the input list in order to transform those elements for the output list. The join function takes a number of lists and combines them into one list. This function is also often called concat, concatenate, or simply cat. The input of our remove if is a list of types and a predicate. Let's say std is floating point. In the meta program library we've built throughout this series, we've used a template called type list for our lists. For this presentation, I have however at times used a shorter list template to save some space on the screen. For the implementation of remove if, we first apply the transform function to wrap any type that does not match the predicate into a type list and replace any type that does match the predicate any type that is floating point in our example with an empty type list. Next, we use a join operation to merge all the lists in this list of lists. As a result, every type in our original input, which did match the predicate, has been turned into an empty list in the transform step, and after the join step, this empty list has disappeared. In other words, the type was removed. Types that did not match the predicate were wrapped in a list, and after the join step, they remain as expected. This means that we can now analyze the compile time of such a remove if implementation by simply adding the compile time of the transform part to that of the join part. To fully implement our remove if and analyze it further, we'll need two small helper functions. Let's first have a look at the function that we pass to transform. I like to call this function wrap if not. Wrap if not is quite a simple function. It takes a predicate and the type t. If the predicate holds for the type, it returns an empty list. If the predicate does not hold, it will wrap that type in a list and return it. Since our transform expects a meta function that takes only a type, we could use an alias to create a function func that takes a type t and will then act as a wrap if not for a predefined predicate and that t. To generate such a function on the fly for any predicate, we put this template alias in a meta function called wrap if not func. So instead of returning a type, this wrap if not func returns a meta function. Transform itself is a template, taking as input the list on which to operate and a function to apply to each of the elements of the list. To implement the transform function, we'll define a specialization for when it's called with a type list of t's, in which case we define the output type by making use of some smart parameter pack expansion. By adding the ellipses, the triple dots, after the call to func, this will expand to a type list of func called on the first parameter, func called on the second parameter, the third, etc. If we analyze the runtime of the transform phase of our remove if, we see that we have a type list with n elements as input, leading to n applications of our predicate. The wrap if not predicate is very simple and only takes a constant compilation time. Creating the output list is only a single instantiation, but recall from episode 10 that the cost of an instantiation is also dependent on the number of template arguments. Since the output list contains n elements, this will again cause linear time. Adding it all up, we get a linear compilation time for the transform part. For the join, we initially just use a simple recursive implementation. We use a specialization for the case where we are given more than two type lists. First a type list of t's, followed by a type list of u's, and optionally even more lists. To handle this input, we inherit from join called on a type list of both t's and u's. 
followed by any other list that were passed to us. Hence, every time we recurse using the specialization, we will effectively merge the first two lists. Of course, at some point the specialization will be instantiated with exactly two lists. They will be merged into one, at which point the specialization no longer matches, and we need another specialization to act as a terminating condition. When join is called to the single list, we know that we are done and simply define our type alias to be that list. As always, we can add an underscore t type alias for convenience. Every time we recurse, the number of lists is reduced by one, as we merge the first two lists. This means that both the number of recursive instantiations of the join specialization, as well as the different intermediate list types that are created, is linear in the number of lists that need to be joined. Again, remembering that the cost of instantiating a template is based on the number of template parameters, we find that the cost of instantiating all those join specializations is quadratic in the input size. If we look at the total cost of instantiating all the intermediate lists used in the recursive join calls, we find that the number of instantiated lists is linear, and since the largest type list, the one where we merge everything into, contains at most n elements, this will never exceed a quadratic compilation time. As such, we can conclude that the total compilation time of the join function is quadratic in the input size. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you might have noticed that the output of our transform is going to be a list of lists, whereas our join function was defined such that it takes a parameter pack of lists. As such, we need one last helper function, join list of lists, which simply takes the elements from a list and passes them to join. With all of these functions in place, we can now finally define our new remove if meta function. Remove if is a template taking a predicate and a list on which to operate. Its output type is defined as the result of first calling transform on that list, with as transformation function the wrap if not meta function returned by calling wrap if not func on that predicate. The transformed list that results from this is then passed to join list of lists to compute the final output. Now that we have this new remove if meta function and use some analysis to predict a quadratic compilation time, let's do some benchmarking to see if we also see this quadratic behavior in practice. I benchmarked both the lazy implementation as well as the new remove if that is defined as a composition of the transform and join meta functions. The benchmarks were made using Clang, which will get similar results with GCC or MSVC. More importantly, I used the techniques described in episode 10 to get the most accurate measurement of only the compilation time of the algorithm itself and not the noise caused by other compilation overhead. I did need to modify some compiler flags to increase the maximum recursive type instantiation depth to get the results for the larger input sizes. The data clearly shows an exponential trend as we predicted in our analysis. While compiling with larger input sizes, I got some stack nearly exhausted warnings, which may have negatively impacted the compilation time for those measurements, and might explain why the data seems to show an exponent that is larger than 2. Although our new composed implementation seems to be slightly faster than the previous lazy implementation, we still won't get very far as long as we have this exponential compilation time. So let's see how we can improve that further. As we saw in our analysis, the bottleneck is clearly the join algorithm. Somewhat simplified, we found that the quadratic compilation time of join is caused by the linear number of recursive steps, which each cost linear time. Given that the input of our join function is linear in size, and we are building lists of linear size, there's not much hope of reducing the cost of the recursive instantiations to be anything less than linear. So if our total compilation time is the number of recursive steps times something we cannot get below linear, our only way to improve is to make sure we need fewer recursive steps. Looking at the code, a simple way we can reduce the number of recursive steps is to simply merge more than two lists in every step. We could, for example, add a specialization for the case where we are past at least three lists. As this three list specialization is more specialized than a two list version, it will get precedence and as such we will merge away two lists every time it is called, essentially dividing the number of type instantiations by a factor two. This idea of essentially skipping recursive steps by doing the work of multiple steps in just one is called fast tracking. Of course, to really make a dent in our compilation time, we need to do more than simply reduce the compilation time by a constant factor. So let's use this idea of fast tracking to make a bunch of different specializations. We will ignore this three list specialization and instead 
next to the original toolist specialization, we will create a specialization for the case where join is called with 4 to the power of i lists up till a reasonable value of i. So our first specialization will be for two lists, the second one will be for four lists, the third for 16, the fourth for 64, etc. Clearly the resulting code will never fit on these slides, but this will look something like this. Now say we apply such a join to a big set of 42 lists. Initially the 2, 4, 8 and 16 specializations will match. Since 16 is the most specialized one, it will get precedence over the others when the compiler does its substitution. As a result, the first 16 lists will be merged into one, leaving us with 27 lists. Again, the 16 list substitution is chosen, reducing the number of lists to 12. At this point, substitution would fill for the 16 list specialization, leaving the 4 list specialization as the most specialized one. This brings us down to 9 lists. The 4 list specialization is used again 2 more times, bringing us to 6 and then to 3 lists. At this point, only the original 2 list specialization is left. After calling it twice, we end up with only a single list and have finished our join operation on 42 lists with only 7 recursive instantiations. This means that, assuming you have enough specializations to find, by making use of fast tracking, we now have only a logarithmic number of recursive steps, which makes our compilation time in the order of n log n. Of course, there is a practical limit to how many specializations you can reasonably define. Because of this, we are really hitting the limit of how well this type of analysis can predict our compilation time. So let's go back to our benchmarks and see how well this fast tracking performs in practice. For the benchmarks, I looked at two versions. First, we have a fast track implementation with specializations going only up to a modest 16 list. As you can see, we already get a huge improvement. If we add just a single extra specialization for the case of 64 lists, we again see another big jump in compilation time. At this point, we are already looking at a factor 16 improvement over the lazy implementation for the biggest input set. And we are not done yet. This big improvement is the result of bringing the number of recursive steps down from linear to, given enough specializations, logarithmic. But with the next technique, we can go all the way down to just a single step. When we looked at the behavior of the fast tracking implementation on 42 lists, we saw that we needed multiple instantiations of the 16, 4, and two list specializations to bring down the number of lists to one. Of course, if we would have supplied exactly 64 lists, we would have been done with only a single invocation of the 64 list specialization. So if we would have taken our original 42 lists and simply added 22 empty lists, we would have merged 42 lists without having to do any recursion. At this point, you might already realize where I'm going with this. Let's turn our specialization for at least 64 lists into a join for up to 64 lists by using default arguments. In order to fit everything on a single screen, I will demonstrate this with 16 types instead of 64. But the idea is of course the same. First we define a join 16 template. Here we use the empty lists as default arguments. We then define a specialization for exactly 16 lists. There is no recursion here as we immediately compute the return type by specifying the type alias to be the merged list. At this point, join 16 can correctly join up to 16 lists. Of course, we want our join to work for more than 16 lists as well. So we now define join itself to make use of join 16. This is where the recursion comes in. If join is called with 16 or fewer lists, we just have a single invocation of join 16. If it is called with more than 16 lists, we recurse a couple of times. In general, the number of recursive steps is now n over 16. Every step we invoke join 16, as well as need linear time for the instantiation of the new lists and the instantiation of join. Of course, if we created join 64 instead of join 16, the constant changes to 64. If we assume we have defined a join x, where x is in the order of n, we have just created a join with linear compilation time. So let's try this out in practice. Here I'm only showing the results for 1000 and 2000 inputs, as the bars are getting too small otherwise. In dark blue we have the defaults implementation using join 16 which I just showed. In purple we have the defaults implementation using join 64. This implementation is more than 50 times faster than our initial lazy implementation of remove if. Of course our initial motivation for optimizing remove if was not just performance. We were running into the recursive instantiation limit with a simple lazy implementation which made it impossible to run our meta function on larger input sets.
now that we have significantly cut down on the number of recursive instantiations, let's see how far we can go. It turns out that with the default 64 algorithm, we can still process 10,000 types about twice as fast as we could 2,000 with the original lazy implementation. To go through 50,000 types, it takes only 38 seconds. Clearly, we've come a long way from the eager implementation in episode 11, which crashed the compiler at just 20 types. We might be able to push our runtime even further by creating a defaults algorithm that uses join 256 or even a join 1024. However, there's a big disadvantage to this optimization technique, which I haven't talked about so far. Say we would create a join that uses 1024 default arguments. If we now want to join, say, three lists, you're still going to pay for instantiating a type with 1024 template arguments, even though 1021 of them will be the default empty lists. This is an advantage the fast tracking algorithm has over the one that uses defaults. With a fast tracking implementation, the compiler instantiates a couple of specializations with few template arguments, while with the defaults implementation, the compiler instantiates only a single type, but must pay for a thousand template arguments. In the next episode, we'll see how we can get the best of both worlds, as we push our optimizations even further. If you like this video and learned something new, consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date as new videos are released. As always, you can find the code we discussed on the Bits of Q GitHub. There's a link in the description. See you next time.